Good morning. Right? Yeah. Guess where I'm going today? Huh? Right? I'm going. And no, and I want you right. And I want people to notice, please, what team I'm wearing today, which one I am not. I'm just saying that. Where Susan? She's a big Cubs fan too. No, 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 no. Yes, they are. And I was totally moved to go Brewers today. I had all the Cubs stuff out, and I was like, mm, I got to be a Brewer. Oh, okay. We got to go. Stop, stop gabbing. Yes, everybody, let's stand and do our welcome song. All right, thanks for coming today. It is May, can you believe it? I hope you checked your calendar because if you looked outside, you might not know it. Uh, we should really tell Mother Nature, although she's finally getting the message, I think. You see how green everything's getting? It's just heartwarming. My, my heart just sings when I walk the, my dog through the neighborhood and, and all the grass is growing up and all the weeds and all, just, it's just nice. So. I'm just waiting for the warmer weather, but I'm sure it will get here eventually. So, uh, so thanks for coming. Um, we've got a great uh, service for you today and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So let's start out by joining me in the statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good omnipotence. And our affirmation, thank you, God, that we have come to this place to release the past, celebrate the present, and embrace the future in love, peace, harmony, and prosperity. And our congregational affirmation. This is, the, this is the affirmation that we say to draw to us that next great, greatest, perfect new minister. We at the Unity Center are a loving, diverse, inclusive, spiritual community who come together to demonstrate and live the teachings of Jesus Christ by listening, learning, and empowering ourselves and others. 
All right, it is time for uh, prayer requests. Just a first name and a, a word or two that for, of the request. Anyone have one? Yes. Okay, healing for their knee. Anyone else? Susan. Okay. Yes. Leandra. Okay. Okay. So what what are we? You just want to send light to her for for joy and peace. Yes. Jesse. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's a big one. We're going to have to pray extra hard. But yes, it, I agree 100%. Rich? Okay, great. That is nice to hear. Yeah. And, uh, and for the world, for learning that mishaps can sometimes turn out to be great good. Ooh. Mishaps can hold great good. Okay. Do you have another one, Susan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I would like to say a prayer of gratitude that our roof is continuing to uh, hold perfectly. My gosh, what a downstorm last night. And uh, we're nice and dry today. So that's, that's, really nice and gratitude for everybody here in the congregation as well okay so so join me in uh centering yourself we want to gather our energy open ourselves as channels because we all are channels that we can bring god's peace and god's healing into the world we can send out blessings to surround Mary and Danny, Leandra and Jesse, David and Denise. Our entire world seem surrounded in peace, first within and then without. Ginny, in gratitude for healing. For a world that we're becoming wiser and more discerning, that we learn and grow from every mishap. Send that healing peace to all of Milwaukee, especially those areas where people are traumatized and tend to react with violence rather than peace. And gratitude for our congregation and our building and for being here today. We send these blessings in the name of the Christ Spirit, and we thank God for his ability to use us as channels for his peace and his blessing and his joy in the world. Amen. All right. The 12 powers of May, the, the first Sunday of every month, we talk about the power this is a unity teaching, and the power of May is power. Power is the ability to master, have dominion, and control. The disciple is Philip, who represents power over our thoughts and feelings. The corresponding color is purple. It is located at the throat. 
And the affirmation is, I have the power to create my world. Let's all say that together. I have the power to create my world. Once more, like you mean it. I have the power to create my world. All right. Good job. Don't forget that. And the daily word today is joy. And uh, it's a joy for me to bring Linda up here to say it. And what a great word to start the month with. I carry joy in my heart. My many happy experiences and memories may lead me to feel joyful, but I know they are not the source of my joy. One of my divine gifts, joy, is part of my spiritual identity, as close to me as my next breath. Joy wells up and spills over within me when I bring my awareness to my spiritual nature and to my oneness with all good and all life. It is an attitude I hold in mind and a feeling in my heart. The happiness I feel in life depends on my allowing my inner wellspring of joy to come forth. I nurture my joy my, by maintaining a regular spiritual prayer practice that enhances my awareness of God and by making time for the things that make me happiest. I go into the world grateful for the joy that resides within me, my gift to share generously. And from Isaiah, for you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. All right, Susan's Larkin, Susan Larkin's message today is about kicking it up a notch. And so I wanted to play this song about urging us all to kick it up a notch. I don't know what you will say, but I'm going to tell you anyway. It's time for your life to shine. The day can sometimes weigh us down, but you can turn it all around. It's time for your life to shine. We don't know what life may have in store. You might think you're at the brink and you get more. Sometimes it's enough to shake us to the core, but it's time for our light to shine. So I don't know what you will say, but I'm going to tell you anyway. It's time for your light to shine. The day can sometimes weigh us down, but you can turn it all around. It's time for your light to shine. It's time for us to come together, because otherwise this world can grind us in the ground. But if we work together, we can pick each other up if ever we are down. I don't know what you will say, but I'm going to tell you anyway. It's time for your light to shine. You may think you failed the test, but all I see is your success. Be proud of the light you shine. Let go of judgment. We'll move ahead. Release the past. Choose joy instead. Let's turn this whole world on its head. It's time for our light to shine. You might think your light is like a candle in the gloom. But to me, your light is a dozen suns. It's a hundred thousand moons. When I'm feeling empty as some dark and musty too, I reach for the light you shine. I reach for the light you shine. Let go of grief, we'll move ahead. Release the past, choose love instead. Let's turn this old world on its head. It's time for your light to shine. It's time for our light to shine. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs>
pleasure to bring up a very good friend of mine, and please don't hold that against her, uh, Susan Larkin. She is a, a, an artist and a musician and a, a spiritual teacher that has been performing in, or, and speaking in front of people for decades. And I'm so happy to have her come up here today. Um, she was very, very close to Reverend Ginny Stubbe. And when, when Ginny passed, Susan took it on as, as a, a personal, um, gosh, I can't quite think of the word, but it, pardon? Vendetta. A personal <laughs> vendetta. No, it, it's her personal <laughs> vision to, to take uh, Ginny's teachings out to people and make sure that, uh, that they continue to shine. So here's Susan Larkin. Thank you. That was nice. Ooh, have the microphone on. <laughs> That's new. Now people can hear what I'm saying. Oh dear, all the time. <laughs> and this is my able assistant, Linda, who volunteered yesterday. If there's anything I can do. Oh boy, do I know how to bump music. There's lots you can do. Okay. Oh my Lord. Okay. <laughs> this is like talking to yourself a lot. Have this thing on. Well, I need this one at home. Okay. <clears throat> My granddaughter asked, do you talk to yourself all the time? I went, no, just when I'm with you. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay, well, I'm over-prepared because that's my, that's how I roll. <laughs> okay, see, I don't need the Kleenex yet. Okay, Linda, no problems. <laughs> see, I, <laughs> I have been a professional woman. I have had an assistant. I know how to behave. All right, here we go. Okay. I'm gonna start with singing because I can do that and I can count on it. Hair is something I wrote years ago when I was so undone, I could not pull it together. So called in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I don't have to stand in front of this, do I? It's all becoming clear to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so hard not to be silly. Okay. Maybe I should be silly first. No, okay. Holy Spirit, set me free. Holy Spirit, let me be your of love all I dream of God of love and then there was a time when I was in the Order of Christ Sophia which was a mystical Christian group that turned into be a cult but it was very educational until it got scary um, here's at the night time we would pray and we would chant and this was one thing one lady chanted. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love, more power, more of you And I will worship you with all of my heart. And I will worship you with all of my mind. And I will worship you with all of my soul. For you are my God. Yes. Okay. All right. I have typed up everything in 18 point and double space, so I do not need my glasses. But I have my glasses <laughs> just in case. Okay. When I was going through 
Jenny's materials and how many in this room knew Jenny? Okay, lovely. All right. I bought 10 of these. I will get more. Anybody who wants them, it's Jenny. Um, what's that girl right there who's like an AV gal? Could you give one of these to her? She knew Jenny before I did. Okay. Let me see if I've got any more. Okay. And I welcome our, our people from Madison. Do we have any people from Sher uh, excuse me, Sheboygan here today? Jenny, uh, Jenny Rockton. I will talk about that for about 20 minutes. Um, who feels like they've known Jenny the best in the group? No hands? Second best. <laughs> Third hand. Okay, I got three. Okay, I'm going to wear one. <laughs> Um, Jenny's daughter, Joy, has given us all of Jenny's books. We now have the Jenny Stewie Memorial Library, which is housed here. It's in a room right behind us, up oh, right there, Linda, right there, is that where it is? You can come up here and go like this if you like too, because there's so, so many ways we can have an assistant, okay. I want you to take any books you want, okay? Because Jenny's books was where Jenny's wisdom came from. She swore she never had an original thought in her life. I'm like, but <laughs> now that I see what she was teaching us from. In this notebook, I found from her early Unity learning days I, that said, Lesson material. We've got about 20 of these. Lessons, workshops, conferences, everything she ever did. I do not claim to ever encompass everything she ever was because she was everything we all are. We're the whole shebang. And it's just a matter of some days we can let that show. And some days we're like, oh, I couldn't do that. Okay. So in this book are the three messages to her. She went by to run every speech. Humor, got that covered. Teach one principle. Okay. Third one, leave the audience feeling they benefited from coming. Okay. Next was the first handout she ever used. And we've heard it before. It says, good morning. This is God. I will be handling all of your problems today. I will not need your help. So relax and have a great day. Okay. All right. I'm learning to recycle. I found myself going to McDonald's the other day. I was very disappointed in myself. I was very guilty. I was very embarrassed. But I was so hungry. I had things to do. So I bought the littlest muffin, the lowest calorie. Okay. And after I ate, I thought, hold everything. You're a writer. <laughs> so I recycled the McDonald's bag that was crumbled up on the floor in my car. I'm like, come here. I began to write since I always write. Can't help myself. Dear diary. This is a pretty powerful time in my life, 428, 22. I feel all the emotions I remember feeling all my life, but they have seasoned up nice, like Irish stew I ordered the other night from the pub in Fort Atkinson. Seasoned emotions, like not the raw kind, rough or cold or too juicy to handle, not maudlin or overdone like a soap opera. Seasoned up nice, rich and mellow, Reminiscent of everything that went into all the years of the well-seasoned feelings in the making. I went to dinner with a man I clearly have fallen in love with, and that's where I'm going to stop reading. But come on, <laughs> she's on TV. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi, Zoom people. <laughs> you can read it if you find me later. Okay, so I showed it to my granddaughter because I've taken to doing surprise drive-bys to my eight-year-old granddaughter. She lives in New Berlin. I'm an early riser. I watch the sunrise. And then the writing is usually already kicked in from the dreams. 
So I show up at their house, unbeknownst to them many times, at 7.20 in the morning, and drive my car, uh, which you know is Jenny Stuvey's red car. She gave to me years ago when I didn't have a car. Bless her heart. So I drive by, <laughs> I jump in my son's car, because nowadays they drive the children to the bus. If they're rich enough to drive the children to the bus, the bus is at the end of the, bless your heart, driveway. Okay, so I jump in the car next to either my son or my little eight-year-old or whatever, and I do some wisdom for the day and jump out. Well, this day I had this. And I said, look, I recycled McDonald's. If you happen to make a mistake and go there, um, you can do this too. Because she writes and she draws and she's, she's a wonderful little character. So I showed her and I said, but it says, I don't know what to do with these panels on the outside. She just looks at me and she goes, art? Like, okay, okay. So we'll decorate it. All right. All right. My favorite story of Ginny is the favorite joke she told, because she always started off with a joke. Was the one about the woman who was at the, um, what's that major football game they have? Not the World Series, that's baseball. The Super Bowl? Got it, thank you. Not, not a sports nut. Okay. So um, not that it's nutty to be sports people. It's okay. Um, so the, this lady, she goes to the Super Bowl and she sits by herself. Raise your hand if you've seen this joke, heard this joke. Ha <laughs> ha, bonus. Okay. So lady sitting by herself at the Super Bowl. And there's this guy across the way in the high seats, the lower amount of change to buy those. And he looks over at this lady and she's sitting and there's an empty seat next to her. He's like, my Lord, the whole game, empty seat, empty seat. He can't handle it. He's like, wait a minute. So halftime, is that what they call it? Okay, halftime, <laughs> that's what I call it when I go to a play and I know I'm off there. I'm like, that's not a halftime, it's an intermission. But at any rate, halftime, he looks over at the seat still empty. He's good. I got to ask her. He scurries over there. He goes down there and he goes, ma'am, I'm so... This is the Super Bowl, and I'm I'm just shocked that you should be alone. At a, at a uh, who whose seat is that? She goes, oh, that's my husband's seat. He says, oh, I understand. Where where is he? Oh, he passed away. And he says, oh, I'm so sorry. I I'm sorry. It, it, but was there anyone who in your family, you know, who might have come and sat in that seat? And she says, they're all at the funeral. <laughs> That's Ginny material, okay? That's Ginny material. Yay. Never took herself too seriously, and no ground was ever sacred for that girl. Mm -mm. Okay. And now I start. Here's my intro. Ah. We all came of age at a time when great teachers shifted light, bright lights away from religious dogma and onto a field we called new thought. Let's celebrate what we know by living it. Brilliant teachers of our own era have seen things differently and shared the vision. Reverend Ginny Stubbe's teachers were based on the works of Deepak Chopra, Eckhart Tolle, Edgar Cayce, Carolyn Mace, Marianne Williamson, Wayne Dyer, Thich Nhat Hanh, Louise Hay, Ernest Holmes, The Course in Miracles, and of course, our own Myrtle and Charles Fillmore. It's time to tune into what we know. We got this. Let's live it. I hope this day is the first talk in a series that I dedicate to my dear friend and mentor, Reverend Jenny Stuby. I hope we all do Jenny Stuby talks. We've got her handouts. We've got her heart. We've got her zeal if we knew her. Through her books, her notes, her CDs, her talks on YouTube. Tune them in if you don't know. Jenny Stuvey's on YouTube. At Unity West, at Unity in Madison, at Unity in Sheboygan, and right here at Unity in Milwaukee. She was Wisconsin's own, an old school traveling preacher, a jokester, a storyteller, a polka dancer, a social activist, proud grandma to Jake and Queenie and Ella and her vintage Facebook entries with jokes about her dear husband, Vern. 
She'd always build up to that fun twist in the story when she'd write, and that's when the fight started. Okay. Jenny Stuvey, a former nurse and occupational therapist, also had a decades long prison ministry in Racine, delivering positive life skills workshops to women in jail, then boxes and boxes of food and clothing to families in need. She was a fearless woman. She walked on hot coals with longtime friend and teacher Edwina Gaines. Walk on fire, that kind of gal. Ginny told us you can't outgive God. But I try every day, she would add. She lived it. But take any credit, be comfortable with compliments, forget about it. She swore she never had an original thought in her head. Got all those talks and seminars, retreats from the books she read, and the life she lived. You know those old cars for sale in the country, right up in the grass? Well, Jenny would drive right up to those people, knock on the door and say, oh yeah, she had that red car. And on her back of the license plate, it said Rev Jenny. Okay, drive right up there and say, I wonder if you'd like to contribute to my ministry. Can I have your car? They'd give it to her. <laughs> He'd give it to her. And then she'd either have it hauled off or she'd whatever. She would bring it to some people in Racine who were car repair guys who needed the work. She'd pay for them to fix the car. She'd give the car to somebody who needed the car. She was active every single day. Her phone messages were full. And so for decades, she's provided money for rent, presents for Christmas, a hand to hold in court and tough love at all hours. And of course, she brought those old cars to people who fixed them. And because that license plate is so evident and because that red car is so red, she would go into neighborhoods, she told me in Racine, that the police would not go. And she'd hear kids go, Reverend Jenny's here. And that's who she was. She, whew. all right. And she'd bring folks out to her house in Waterford, not to show off her beautiful life, which she had, but to show it was possible to wake up in peace and quiet. It was possible to sit down and do a puzzle. They might even get a chance to meet Old Vern. Quiet, kind, stalwart, white-haired Norwegian fella who watched Andy of Mayberry and Gunsmoke, St. Vern. And, and maybe some of us remember the message on her landline. You've reached Reverend Jenny in St. Vern, leave us a message. And St. Vern just had knee surgery. He's doing fine. His Norwegian brothers have come in and helped him a little bit. Jenny's list just a little further out of reach now. But like she used to remind us, nobody dies. As far as I'm concerned, Jenny Stuvey was made out of light and sass and stood for all things unity. A proud 1966 graduate of the ministerial program at Unity Village in Lee Summit, Missouri. Now let's get to the meat of this talk, or she's going to kill me. And if there's anybody I don't want to mess with, I don't care where she's living, <laughs> it's Ginny Stuby. Okay, let's get this. Yeah. Which one do I want? I want to show you this book. When Ginny was for those of you who don't know, Jenny passed away of ALS, and it was awful. It was very awful, and it didn't take very long, but it took too long to get that, okay? So, Jenny, I was, I was going out there and, and taking bags, bags of books with roller carts because I, I found out boxes are too hard, so roller carts work. So, I was bringing them to libraries. I, I live at uh, Convent Ground to St. Francis. So I infiltrated the Catholic libraries with all the unity stuff. Somebody had to do it. So then I put them in those little book boxes I'd find out in front of places. Libraries, little like, of course, <laughs> fundamentals of unity. <laughs> what homeless shelter does not leave that? So began doing that a lot. And, and that was fine. Okay. And then I saw this one box and she had, and she had a bunch of little books that looked more like this. They didn't look like regular books in the library. I said, what's that box? I said, she said, those are my journals. I went, oh, can I have that box? He goes, no, no, Ginny, <laughs> she knew her mind. 
So she said, you may have one of those books. Thank you, Reverend Jenny. She said, those are the books of all the quotes from all the books that I read. That's how I make my talks. That's my secret. I stay cutting edge on all the latest books and the latest information, and I tie it up with the unity information, and those quotes are in these books. So I got one, and it's in Ginny's handwriting, as one would want all journals to be, okay? And um, oh. there was only one entry in this whole book, and there are eight other people there somewhere in the world that have these. So only one quote that she wrote and signed. Uh, today, how shall I live? Now would be a good time for the handouts. Now today, I only made 30 handouts, so if you need to share. Today, how shall I live? I want to live connected to my source. I want to live in joy. I want to take my focus off any problem fear, wound, or insecurity, and turn myself to God. And so I shall. The choice is always mine. Jenny. Okay. Uh, so I read this every day as much as I can, because I figured if Jenny Stuvey was inspired by it, I better pay attention, because those are big old books in there. Maybe there's only a little paragraph that's highlighted. So I want this back, obviously, but I'm going to give this to my Madison friends because I love it that people around this state know and love Jenny. You guys did because you came over. <laughs> so here, I think I have my name in the front. That would be smart, but maybe not. <laughs> it's Jenny's book. Um, so when I went through those books, Hmm. I have what I call underscores. Oh, I want to give, where's my assistant, my able assistant? Here are all the underscores. These are for you. These are all the underscores from Marianne Williamson books. You do not have to pass those out. Those are for you because I know you and I love Marianne. Okay. This is the part where Jenny wanted people to be happy they came. See, <laughs> little treats. Okay, you now have this sheet that says, today, how shall I live? Just exactly what I wrote. Just exactly what she wrote. Exactly what I read. I live connected to my source. Okay. I live in joy. I take my focus off any problem, fear, wound, or insecurity. And you can turn it over. I turn to God. The choice is always mine. Since I'm a writer, I had to write. <laughs> I, saw, I saw talk about thought starters. Okay. So I thought maybe this afternoon the workshop might be about talking about these. Because each of us have different situations in our life that, enough said, <laughs> that are tricky. And Each of these might strike us in a different way. Like I live connected to my source. Well, you know, not today. Not today. Something threw me so far off. Uh-uh. No, no. I found Ego Susan was playing today. I found, found Personality Susan was playing today. I saw Getting Attention Susan was playing today. Did, excuse me, source. Hello. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lost track there. So, okay. So maybe I would write about that. Second one, I live in joy. I try to. I love being joyful. I have a Native American quest in my background and whatever you do, those vision quests, okay, and the sweats. I lived in Oklahoma for about 13 years with a marvelous man who gave me that last name Larkin, which I kept because it's such a cool name. Um, he's passed away. Um, but they gave me a Native, my Native American name was Joybringer. I'm like, well, heck yeah. <laughs> you didn't even know me, you people. <laughs> so, so that seemed authentic. So I loved your song because it talked about a little bit about joy. Um, 
So, okay, I do that pretty much. And then you got the people who are kind of depressed and unhappy and you get this little, you know, what am I like Tigger on Winnie the Pooh? You know, it's a little annoying sometimes when you're having a little trouble. Thank you very much. Calm down. So then I, the people, well, you're happy all the time. I go, no, 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 I'm not. And when I'm not happy, I do not come out and play. <laughs> Pretty simple. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you want to see depression? Come on over sometime. You can't find me. You know, I mean, whatever. We go through stuff. We're like the seasons. We're alive, you know, and poosh. so um, number three, I take my focus off any problem, fear, wound, or insecurity. Well, what's my problem, fear, wound, or insecurity du jour? What is beefing me today? What can't I handle? What can't I keep my licking thoughts off? Well, we might talk about those at the workshop, write about those a little bit. I turn to God. Thank God. Thank God we know that. Thank God this is a religion that doesn't say, well, all those things other religions can say. Um, I turn to God. And the sooner, the sooner I can turn to God. Obviously, we know this stuff. We're not new at this. We're old people. Excuse me. You know, our peer group has been studying this stuff for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, if you've been paying attention since high school. That's why I want to crank it up a notch. Live like it's real. I was worried the other day it can happen about <laughs> not having a place to live. It's kind of a worry. I'm living in a gorgeous place, very nice. But I've been there five years and that's a lot for me, man. I am so restless. So I'm getting restless. And I'm trying not to be rude to the people I live with. I'm trying not to do that stamp the dust off your feet thing in their face. <laughs> And I'm doing my best to love everybody wherever I am, knowing God put me where I'm supposed to be. Okay. So I'm doing all that in my head. And I come over here and I talk to Evelyn. Is that the accountant lady? Is that her name? Eileen, Eileen so close. An E word. Okay. <laughs> Eileen. And um, I said, you know, maybe I'll move to uh, Tosa because I'm going to make a commitment to unity. Because unity just has always felt like a glove for me. And I don't know why I run other places. It's almost for the entertainment value, but unity is where i am so i'm gonna do everything i can for unity so maybe i'll live in wawatosa what the heck so i say to eileen um i'm looking for a bit, and she just didn't even bat an eye she says well you know god's divine order is working in perfect with your heart's desire what where am i oh okay <laughs> nobody has said that to me in the last 24 hours <laughs> not to worry everything's perfect that's right. How was I thinking? Okay. And I am home because that's, we think like that. So you got to say that out loud when people throw their trash at you. Like, well, I don't know what's going to happen. It might happen to you. Say something, you know, that's true. Even just turn to God. You don't have to be rude. Try not to be rude. But boy, sometimes. Okay. So the choice is always mine. Okay. Always mine. Nobody else has the power to remind me that I'm being a jerk and that I'm not paying attention to God. Some of my best friends can do that. But it's our choice, okay? I'm not gonna read underscores. I'm gonna save that for the workshop. They're fabulous. We're gonna work on that. And I'm gonna deal with something called the meat of the message, which I thought maybe I would deal with. But I understand clocks as well as the next. I'm going to read some of my own writing because Jenny reminded me. She's all over me. You can imagine that. Try to talk her stuff. <laughs> You're kidding. Forget about it. So she said, be you. Just be you. She's been bugging me for years to do that. World's missing you, Susan. What? There. Okay. Jenny, read my stuff. There's a little piece I woke up one morning. Because I wake up, my dreams have titles sometimes, which I find fascinating. So I might not remember the dream, but the title. Somebody will say something at the end. I'll go, all right, write it down, get up, sun's up, let's go. Okay. This one's called Wake Up Singing. It's about my husband, Ernie. So I could do the Ernie jokes just like Jenny did the Vern jokes. Okay. No problem. 
Do you know why the birds sing that first thing in the morning? Here we go. Why, dear? To tell all their friends where they woke up. What? See, the birds are always flying, right? Yeah. Well, just before it gets dark, the birds settle into sleep and nestling right where they are. Okay. Then when they wake up in the morning, the first thing they want to do is tell their friends where they are. Ah. Well, why do you think they sing in the morning? He smiled as he sipped his Folgers. I guess I thought they just rise up singing. Same way I rise up writing. They've just got something to say. Hmm. Who do you think you're writing to then? Anyone who'll listen, I guess. Ah. Uh, Ernie Larkin was an older guy. I mean, not as older as this recent boyfriend I had named Palmer, who was really old. See, I mean, really old. He was 30 years older than me. And that's, you shouldn't, but anyway, we were fine. Anyway, <laughs> TV, darn it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ernie Lark was an older guy. I mean, not as older as Palmer, but see, I've always been attracted to the older ones, men and women. I just like people I can learn from. People who've seen more of life than I have. Ernie was a mountain man with a wiry frame and bushy eyebrows, had one of those eyes like Eli Wallach. He was a professor before he retired. And in the 50s, he created the first market research for better homes and gardens. He had this idea of sending out the magazine to every homeowner in the United States for a year for free, better homes and gardens. Then after a while, a letter arrived that said, essentially, if you enjoyed getting the magazine all year for free, that's great. If you want to keep getting it, check and close or bill me later. Smart idea. He was about 15 years my senior and teaching OU School of Journalism in Norman, Oklahoma, where we met. But in his heart, he was a mountain man. When he retired, I made a sign for him that said, free at last. Then with me riding shotgun in the van, we traveled all the mountains and rivers west of the Mississippi. I must have filled 80 journals between 92 and 2000. Then I got my master's, moved to Wisconsin, began teaching psychology at Alberno. Ernie used to tell me, you can't really write unless you have something to say. Uh, but I guess I'm more like those birds. I just wake up singing. Thank you. The meditation, <clears throat> he says, all right. Quiet down. Woo woo music. I begin my meditations with seven. So here we go. Jesus, Holy Spirit. Knowing always you are there. Knowing always you are there. Knowing always you are there. Knowing always you are here. Always, you are here. Knowing, always, we are one. Always, I am, I am. I 
am that I am. All you need is given. Trust the path you're on. now. Thank you so much, Susan. Keep your hand. All right. So now is the time for our offering. So please take your offering in your hand and repeat this prayer with me. There is no lack or limitation. Freely I give and freely I receive from God's abundance. I am blessed as I give and unity is blessed in receiving. All right, and here's ways that you can give from home. And I will be playing a song in just a second. All right. Um... This is a song that I wrote after I heard Ginny give a message here at uh, Unity Center. And, uh, you know, she did kind of make you sit back and, and open your eyes, you know, like what is going on here? So uh, don't, don't blame me if you don't like the words to this because the, these are mostly hers. You can live your whole darn life never quiet all your strife there has to be a better way here's what reverend jenny says sit down shut up and listen sit down shut up and listen how can i say such a thing all I ever do is sing. Well, I'm just the messenger to bring a way to quiet everything. Sit down, be quiet, and listen. Sit down, be quiet, and listen. You want to hear what God will say? Try an hour of power. Take the time to exercise and pray before your shower. And then sit down, be quiet and listen. Sit down, be quiet and listen. You think the world runs too darn fast and no good habit ever lasts. So hard to change the way you've been well. The past is past. So now sit down, be quiet and listen. Sit down, be quiet and listen. When your mind runs round and round and you're distracted by every sound, you feel like you're too tightly wound. Say, not my circus, not my clowns one of her favorite sayings sitting there seems really funky say not my circus not my monkeys 
sitting still is just not relevant. Say, not my circus, not my elephants. And then sit down, shut up, and listen. Sit down, shut up, and listen. Sit down, be quiet, and listen. All right, can we have our basket here? So please join me in praying over these offerings. We know that God's abundance grows through us and through all that we do here at Unity. We bless these offerings, we multiply them. We give them the power to reach out to strengthen our community and our parish and uh, all those that benefit from this building and all the people that are here within it. Amen. All right, it is time for announcements. So uh, we just are starting a brand new book. Uh, it's called What Happened to You? Conversations on Trauma, Resilience and Healing with Bruce T. Perry and Oprah Winfrey. Uh, it's every Thursday from 9.30 to 11. Here in person or virtually if you wish to join on zoom it's really an interesting book and it's it's very amazing it, it's it, it the whole idea of this book is rather than saying like what's wrong with that person you know you see all these horrible things that happen in the world things that people do you know what's wrong with them well the real question is what happened to them that they would react this way to circumstances in their life and uh Trauma, Resilience, and Healing. It's a really an interesting book. So I highly recommend it. Our silent unity prayer is from 11 to 11.15 uh, every Thursday, immediately following the book club. Again, in person or virtual. A Course in Miracles. Is Joanne here today? Oh, there she is. Yes, Joanne leads the Course in Miracles group around 11.45 every Sunday after church. Uh, uses miracle-minded thinking to focus on the principles of universal love and forgiveness. Don't forget to visit our website. We have a lot of things going on there. There's a virtual bulletin board with services and advertisements. We have the Inspiring Insights tab with uh, positive articles that change regularly. We've got a new guided meditation every week on the classes tab, and you can also see past Sunday services. Our life journey group uh, starts, or I mean, meets every uh, second and fourth Monday from 6.30 to 8. Um, it's a wonderful group. Can I see a show of hands if you at attend that group? All right, well, here's, yep, here's five of us. So it, it's really a neat group and uh, we would love to see more of you here. Just bring yourself and an open mind and a warm heart. And a special class following our Sunday service today. So this is the class that Susan's gonna teach on Gen Reverend Ginny Stuvey's wisdom. I hope you can stick around for that. So how shall I live today? How shall I live? So it will start at noon or maybe a little earlier than that. It's Ginny's stories and reflections from, uh, or the, I'm sorry, that is the class material from noon to 1.30. And after that, from 1.30 to whenever, we're gonna have Ginny's stories and reflections from everyone who attends. This was created from Ginny's handouts and notes and from her previous Sheboygan one day uh, retreats at Unity. And uh, Susan will be leading it and you got a good taste of that today. And don't forget, we have the Ginny Stuby library in the classroom right behind this wall that has uh, lots and lots of free books. And we really hope to see many of those find a new home. Um, I helped put them in there and there are some absolute classics and many of them are just a few years old, uh, but there's just some really, really good uh, material in there. So please take a minute and, and take a look if you were looking for some great spiritual material to, uh, to grow with. Okay, expanding consciousness. Uh, there's a, this is a special class that Ron Schaefer is going to uh, give at, uh, on May 29th at noon to two. Um, he's in, actually we changed this. I just talked to him. 
he's going to he's going to do this the week before that on May 22nd because May 29th is Memorial Day weekend. He felt it might not be a great time to have a class. So uh, so he, he's going to be doing uh, teachings on from east and west, including concepts from India, China, Africa, Meso Mesoamerica, and Europe. Love offerings are accepted. This will be um, a lot about meditation. So it sounds like it's very interesting. I hope you can attend. And volunteers are needed. So this place doesn't run itself. I know it seems like it does because everything runs so smoothly, but uh, we could use some help. Um, somebody uh, in the kitchen on Sundays, uh, somebody to come in and, and help with weeding or watering once a month or once a week. Uh, we need lawnmowers once a month. Uh, we have rotating people. We mow, we mow more than once a month, but we only ask people to do it once a month. And uh, anyways, all of that can be, uh, is really appreciated. So reach out to Diane, run, raise your hand. There she is. Reach out to Diane if you're interested in, in helping us out here at uh, the center. Okay, I've, I've probably talked your ears off, so let's all get up and sing. You can be joyful that the announcements are over. So uh, let's form a circle and we can sing Let There Be Peace on Earth. 